Hello, welcome to Collection Speeding at Fort Ticonderoga. My name is Matthew Cagle, the curator, uh, and I'm here today with a couple of very interesting powder horns. Fort Ticonderoga holds one of the largest collections of engraved powder horns from the 18th century, particularly the French and Indian War and the American Revolution. And these two are particularly interesting because they actually were both belonging to soldiers of the same regiment, Colonel Charles Burroughs' Connecticut Continental Regiment that was raised to march north to aid in the American invasion of Canada in 1776. In fact, they ended up retreating to Ticonderoga and spending the rest of 1776 at Mount Independence across the lake in Vermont, ultimately pulling out of that position when their enlistments expired at the end of January 1777. Which means that these soldiers in these horns spent part of the winter of 1776 into 1777 here on the cold shores of Lake Champlain. And in fact, it's around that time that both of these horns were made, in December of 1776 and January of 1777. Now, engraved powder horns are one of the most identifiable and iconic pieces of American folk art from the 18th century. And although both of these horns have some decorative elements, they're most interesting to us for the depictions of the fortifications and defenses of Ticonderoga and Mount Independence that were built by American forces over the summer of 1776. By the end of that year, Charles Burrell's regiment and the rest of the Continental Army numbered nearly 13,000 men, manning posts that literally spanned miles as they held the position in face of the British Army, which pushed back their advance guard at the Battle of Valcour Island, and ultimately found that they could not take the fortresses here before the winter set in. What these provide is literally an in-the-moment glimpse into the fortifications that those Americans built, from what is described as the Thai Fort, the old French fort at Ticonderoga, to the new works, what's described as the Citadel on Mount Independence, even down to depictions of the American vessels in the lake, some of them clearly identifiable by the unique Latin rigs of the row galleys that formed part of Benedict Arnold's fleet. Now, these two horns are particularly interesting. Both of them, the one owned by uh, Lieutenant Colonel John Riley and by drummer Nathan Tubbs of Burroughs Regiment, are unique in their own right. But Tubbs's horn additionally has an interesting comment and says that it was made by Jonas Cleveland, another soldier. And contrary to popular belief, most powder horns were probably not carved by the men that carried them, but acquired by them as souvenirs of military campaigns like those of Riley and Tubbs that took them far from their homes to the shores of Lake Champlain, which would be then for these men, who continued to serve later in the Revolutionary War, a memento of some of their first military service in the cause of American independence.